we need to talk about the death of Naya Rivera. She was a phenomenal actress who lost her life in a mysterious way. It happened on a beautiful day at Lake Piru, and Naya decided to take her son boating. At one point, the actress went swimming with her son, and she never made it back up. The lake took Naya's life, and her son was left helpless on the boat. After Naya's body was found and closure started to set in, her sister got awfully close with her baby daddy, and the pair moved into a home together. Something is very eerie about Naya's passing, and we need to unpack it. So let's get into it. <music> Before we get into this video, here is a quick message from our sponsor. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that you can use to shop from over 600 brands. And what's fun about Scentbird is that they let you try a new fragrance each month for just $16. I actually received this fragrance, Confessions of a Rebel by Get a Room, which smells so good and I love the red container. And what's cool about Scentbird is that they send you these little cards that explain each fragrance. For example, this one says, all heat with plenty of skin. This scent layers mandarin, smooth woods, liquid vanilla, clary sage oil, and a bite of forbidden apple. I love it. And what's great about Scentbird is that they let you pick your fragrances each month. So there are no surprises. They have perfume, colognes, and a bunch of options, including unisex. With each fragrance, you will receive a 30-day supply. And pretty much, the scent comes in this vial that you can pull out. And as you can see, you actually get a good amount. And I've been using this scent for about a week. I really like this scent, but I'm a little bit biased because it's Gucci and it is bougie. They also have a bunch of other designer brands and some indie brands as well, scents you probably never heard of. So I recommend trying it out. There are so many high-end fragrances on this site. And if you end up liking a scent, you can go and buy a full bottle. But if not, you can go and get yourself a subscription and try a different fragrance each month. And if you use my code, you will only spend $11 your first month. And use my code SL04N2 for 30% off your first order. You can also check out more scents from Scentbird by visiting their website, their Instagram, or try their new app for your iPhone or Android device. Thank you, Scentbird, for sponsoring this video, and happy shopping! Naya was born January 12, 1987. She was an American actress, singer, and model who began her career in commercials as a child star. She unfortunately passed away on July 8th, 2020 in a devastating accident at Lake Piru. Today, I want to revisit her mysterious death and talk about the circumstances around it. But before we get into the incident itself, I want to revisit some of Naya's posts before she visited this lake. So six days before Naya passed away, she posted this on her Twitter page. She wrote, No matter the year, circumstance, or strifes, every day you're alive is a blessing. Make the most out of today and every day you are given. Tomorrow is not promised. Which is it's something that you guys have probably heard before in your life, but it's very eerie to see on her Twitter page days before she passed away. Another weird post that Naya made was on her Instagram, and it was one day before she died. So it's a photo of Naya with her four-year-old son, and she wrote, Just the two of us, which... I guess it's pretty normal for a mother to post a photo of her son, but really spooky to see one day before she died. That caption that Naya wrote, just the two of us, was incredibly haunting, especially knowing that it was just her and her son on that boat the day that she died. But let's go ahead and talk about that date, because on Wednesday, July 8th, Naya took her son to a lake located in Ventura County, California. Lake Piru is located in Los Padres National Forest, and she arrived to the lake at around 1 p.m. And I do want to give you guys some background on this lake because it has been known to be dangerous. There have been about a dozen people who have lost their life at this lake, including Naya. 
But there was one man in 1994 who died from drowning in this lake while wearing a life vest. His body was found on the shoreline five days later. And keep in mind, that guy was only 27 years old. Three years later, another man lost his life in this lake because he actually went out into the water to rescue his daughter. Fortunately, his daughter did make it out of the lake safely, but he didn't. And it seems like that story mimics what happened with Naya and her son. I believe they were both in the water and then it got a little bit too rough. Naya tried to save him, but couldn't save herself. But before we get into the details, I want to talk a little bit about that day and her arrival. On this particular day, the weather was beautiful. People were enjoying the lake and Naya decided to take her son out and rent a boat. There's actually footage of Naya showing up to this lake and as you guys can tell, there's already something off. Not only did Naya park kind of far away, but she didn't park in line with the parking lot lines. As you guys can tell, the lines in the parking lot that divide the parking spaces are in an angular fashion, and she looks like she just pulled in straight and parked. You can also tell that Naya is wearing white shorts with a darker top, and she's carrying a large bag. It appears that Naya was walking faster than her son, which you guys know a four-year-old cannot be tamed, but it seemed like she was pretty eager to get out there to the boat. After Naya rented the boat, attendants helped her get onto the boat with her son and she was on her way. While Naya was enjoying her boat ride, she decided to call her father. They talk pretty often and they have a close relationship. Unfortunately, Naya's father had no idea this would be the last time speaking to his daughter. And they actually spoke over FaceTime. Naya would always call her father George and ask for advice. And in this instance, she was driving around in this boat and asked asked him what he thought about them going swimming. They were out in the middle of the lake and Naya told her father George that the boat didn't have an anchor. Instantly, he realized that jumping into the lake was a bad idea. Since they were on FaceTime, he could see what was going on there and he claims that he could see the wind blowing and his stomach was just cringing. I kept telling her, do not get out of the boat. Don't get out of the boat. It will drift away when you're in the water. Lake Piru is a vast lake with strong currents and cold water. So it's really not a comfortable swim. After three minutes on the phone with his daughter, the call cut out. George was quoted saying, it was just heartbreaking. While he was on the call, he took a screenshot of his daughter and he claims he was just sitting there staring at the screenshot. She was wearing sunglasses sunglasses and a baseball cap and grinning beneath the boat's canopy. That was the last time George ever got to see his daughter alive. After that call ended and some time went by, George had a bad feeling and unfortunately within a few hours it became a reality. So Naya's son Josie was quickly rescued by authorities. He was found sleeping in the boat wearing a life vest and everything that Naya brought with her remained in the boat. The only thing missing was Naya. After news broke that Naya went missing, authorities jumped into action and they were trying to locate her. They did an extensive search and rescue operation at the lake and police were using a variety of equipment, including specially trained dogs, to locate Naya. The Ventura County Police Department were keeping fans up to date on social media. They were using tools like helicopter to surveillance the lake, but unfortunately, Naya was presumed dead one day after Josie was found. So at this point, the police were looking for a drowned victim, believing that Naya would have been underwater somewhere. The lake itself is two miles long and its deepest point is 130 feet. It's not a safe environment for divers to go in because there are a lot of plants and fallen trees inside of the lake. So they used a bunch of different technology. One of those tools is an ROV, which pretty much projects an image of what's going on at the bottom of the lake. Authorities continued searching for Naya's body, but as public interest grew, people wanted to go out for themselves and find her. But I did find this one tweet from the police department sent out on July 12th, 
and they wrote that the lake is closed and that the temperatures are already in the 90s. The terrain around the lake is very steep and rugged. Our teams are well equipped and highly trained. We don't want to have to rescue you. But I can understand why the public was frustrated because a lot of people loved Naya. I mean, I was a huge fan of Glee and everyone was devastated to hear the news. It also looks like pressure from the public led the police department to sending divers into the lake to try to find her body. And on the fifth day of searching, they were successful and they found Naya. Yeah, so this has been a, a pretty exhaustive search with a lot of resources over a period of now. Today is day six. This all began, as you know, Wednesday afternoon. So this morning at about 10 after 9, one of our uh, boat crews out there on the lake discovered a body floating. This would have been at the kind of the northeast side of the lake. Mysteriously, Naya was actually found floating at the top of the lake, which is different than what authorities were saying, because they believed that she was at the bottom of the lake, which doesn't really add up. I feel like if her body was floating at the top of this lake, you would have found her way quicker than five days. So her body was rescued on Monday. Keep in mind that she went missing on Wednesday, July 8th. Her body did go through an autopsy and everything looked consistent with someone who would have drowned on that date. So it wasn't like Naya was missing for a few days and then she drowned. The autopsy claims that she did drown that day and it looks like it. But something I found really interesting was that her autopsy report reported that she called for help as she drowned, which Again, I find that kind of like bizarre that they would know from her autopsy that she was, you know, calling for help as she was drowning. I'm not entirely sure if they came to that conclusion from the autopsy alone because Josie, her four year old son, did reveal some details about what happened before the incident. And what authorities believe went down was that Naya went into the water with her son. She wasn't wearing her life vest, which that's actually something that she didn't really want to have in the first place place. When she was renting out the boat, the attendants asked her to put on her life vest, but she denied. So the attendant put it in the boat and let her go on. Naya then went into the middle of the lake and FaceTime called her father. She asked him if he thought it would be a good idea for her to go swimming with Josie, and he said, hell no. Unfortunately, Naya did not get his message, and she decided to go into the water without anchoring her boat, which is a big no-no. Police believe that the boat started drifting away and Naya started panicking, so she used all of her power to try to get her son back onto that boat. But there were some strong currents in that lake that afternoon, and Naya wasn't able to get herself back on. So then Naya was taken down by the water and never resurfaced surfaced, leaving her son alone on that boat. When it comes to online conspiracy theorists, there are a bunch of different scenarios floating around. One involves that parking lot footage of Naya. Some people believe that maybe she was being stalked or followed, and the reason why she came to this lake in the first place was to get onto this boat and escape whoever was following her, which this could explain why Naya was looking back in the footage and maybe she was trying to run from someone, but honestly, I don't think that's what happened. Happened. Some people believe that Naya wanted to take her own life, which could explain some of the bizarre behavior in that footage. But it doesn't really line up with the fact that she packed lunch and she had a bunch of things with her on that boat unless she decided to take her life and she wanted her son to survive with whatever means she had on that boat. But that doesn't sound like a loving mother, which we know Naya definitely loved her son. Most people believe that Naya felt victim to a freak accident, that maybe she dived into the water and got stuck on one of those trees, or when she went swimming, the boat started floating away and she couldn't keep up. She got too tired and ended up drowning herself. Either way, it's clear that this Lake Piru isn't safe, and Ventura County needs to make that known. There's actually a petition out there asking the city to put up warning signs outside of the lake, which I found really crazy that there are no warning signs outside outside of this lake that multiple people have died at. It's such a simple ask, but this city isn't delivering. So if you guys want to go and sign that petition, I will list it below.
below. The tourists who visit this lake have no idea how dangerous it could be, so they might as well put a sign up. That would serve as a little bit of justice for these victims. But I want to talk a little bit about Naya's love life, because she was married to a man named Ryan Dorsey, and this man is the father of her son, Josie. The couple was only married for two years, and they actually separated in 2016. After Naya lost her life, her ex-husband Ryan was left all alone with their son Josie. But it wasn't long until another woman stepped into the picture. Which is fine, because Ryan is divorced and he's a single man, but that woman was Naya's younger sister. Her name is Nikayla Rivera. She's eight years younger than her sister Naya, and she was a 25-year-old model at the time. And her and Ryan decided to move into a three-bedroom home together to raise Naya's son, Josie. Obviously, something sounds really wrong about that situation because this man lost his baby mama, and now he's getting with her younger sister after she's gone. On September 6th, Two months after Naya lost her life, Nikayla was seen helping Ryan begin moving his belongings from his previous home to their new home. Two days later, on September 8th, the pair spent two hours loading furniture from his old home into a yellow rented moving truck, which Ryan drove to the new house. Nikayla followed Ryan and the moving truck in his black Tahoe back to their rented house, which keep in mind is about $5,000 a month, so they're living the high life. The following day, on September 9th, the pair were seen helping each other with yard work and chatting happily. It seems whenever the pair has been spotted, they're always together. They never leave the home without each other's company, which is really weird to see because I don't really see their son ever with them. So it's really just Ryan hanging out with Nikayla. This next photo makes me disgusted because on September 19th, the couple were seen holding hands as they shopped in a local Target. One eyewitness saw them in that target and was quoted saying, They seemed really comfortable together and are obviously helping each other out through a very difficult period in both of their lives. They were fooling around and chatting the whole time. They're obviously helping lift each other's spirits, which that's clear in my opinion, but how far are they going? How far is too far? If I was Naya's spirit, I would go and haunt my little sister, because how in the hell does she think it's okay to go and pursue her dead sister's baby daddy ex-husband? But it doesn't seem like Nikayla really cares what anyone has to think about their situation. She took to her Instagram and she wrote, In the darkest time of my life, the only thing that is important is my friends and my family. I'm showing up for my nephew, even though I can't show up for myself. She also wrote, I'm not concerned with the way things look, because no one can see each agonizing moment we all endure. What matters the most, I've learned, is to show compassion, not to judge others, and never take a moment of life for granted. I hope you all can do the same. I love the message behind this, but it doesn't really address the situation with Nikayla and Ryan. Well, it looks like Nikayla wasn't the only one feeling the heat, because Ryan also responded to the rumors. He made a 12 minute long Instagram video where he was ranting on and on, but here's a clip from that. Can't believe this is real life and that I am about to even um, address any of this nonsense. You know, there's people making judgments, um, making assumptions, they're sending um, terrible messages, wishing death upon strangers that they truly know next to zero about. Uh, I probably lost a little over 20 pounds. Um, I don't get good sleep. I'm sad every day. I wake up. I go to sleep sad every night, staring at the ceiling or I'm staring at the wall. And uh, I think to myself how, how lucky I am to, to still have my mom and to have her help out in my life still. And, and then I think about how he won't have that same opportunity in his future. And then going to a funeral, trying to explain that to an innocent child or what a funeral is and way before they should ever even have to think about her deal with any of that and we get through that and then he asked me if tt can live with us i want tt to live with us forever because she's now the closest thing that he has to a mom because you're gonna need all the help you can get as a single parent trying to 
build your career and navigate this. Uh, also creating such absurd narratives, trying to create false realities, talking about relationships. <laughs> Man, I wish I was worried about a relationship right now. I'm not thinking about this and living with this every day. Honestly, I can kind of understand where Ryan is coming from, but again, he's not addressing the whole situation with Nikayla because from everything I've seen, it looks like they're a full-blown couple. So that's a really weird way to interact with your ex-wife's sister, especially when the ex-wife isn't around. I wonder if they were this close when Naya was around. I wonder if they were holding hands as they all were hanging out for family events. I'm sure they weren't. And I think the worst part of it all is that it seems really disrespectful to Naya. I don't know how Naya's parents, Yolanda and George, could be okay with Nikayla's relationship with Ryan, but Yolanda did say something really sweet about her daughter. She was quoted saying, I feel Naya's energy constantly telling me, Mom, be happy. Don't cry. I'm okay. Go get Josie. Have fun. And I feel that it's coming from her. I literally wake up every morning and it's almost like a restart button and I have to shake it off one foot at a time. It actually makes me a little bit emotional thinking about what Yolanda and George have gone through because they lost their daughter Naya at only 33 years old. She was such an accomplished actress and she had so much more life to live. But looking back at those Instagram posts that we started off in this video talking about, it makes me think that Naya kind of knew that something was going to happen. But before we close out this video, I want to talk a little bit about the Glee curse because I used to be a huge fan of Glee, but there seems to be a curse amongst all of the former castmates. I came across this interesting article that describes the whole Glee curse. Here are a few other cast members from Glee who have gotten themselves in trouble. This one, Mark Sailing, actually got in trouble for possessing CP, which is inappropriate images of children. This man downloaded thousands of images over the course of eight months in 2015. Another problematic cast member is Lee Michelle, which I've actually wanted to talk about her for some time because so many people have called her out for bullying. So if you guys want me to talk about Lee Michelle, I'm happy to do a whole video. Comment below what you want to see. And of course, there is Corey, who unfortunately passed away from an overdose at the age of 31 years old. He was open about his struggles with addiction, but that addiction overcame him. I'm not exactly sure where Naya fits in in this whole Glee curse, but it is really sad to see all of these characters just go through a bunch of crap, especially because I was one of those OG fans who watched those original seasons, and it's really heartbreaking. But I mean, I think Naya's story is the worst by far because she had a mysterious death that was followed by her sister going and pursuing her ex-husband, which... I'm not entirely sure if they're still on, I doubt they are, but it was a freaky thing to read because it was only two months after she was gone. And that holding hand picture that was taken in Target is unforgivable in my opinion. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Here's my email if you have any other video ideas for me. You guys emailed me about this whole situation and that's why I'm talking about it. I mean, I was also a huge fan and I was around when everything was going down, but we didn't talk about it then. But you know what? We're talking about it now. And that's the thing with my channel. I love going back in history and talking about things that have happened in the past because these people will live on. Naya is so much more than a victim to this freak accident and she should be remembered for the amazing work that she did throughout her career. But let's go ahead and open a P.O. Box package item to end off this video. It looks like this one's from something called C... 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 Z... B... R... M. Okay, cool. Oh, is it from Amazon? I guess it's from Amazon. Okay, let's go ahead and see what's going on here. I like... Honestly, the smile I feel like is on every package nowadays. It's kind of... <gasps> what is that? <gasps> oh. Okay, we're all good. Um, what is this? Oh my gosh. Was this supposed to be sent to me? What is this? Um, it looks like it's a salon style hairspray bottle. Cool. I don't know if this is for like watering plants or what this is for, but thank you so much whoever sent it. I wish it would say something. It doesn't say anything about who this is from. I don't know how, I can't figure out who actually sent this, but okay, cool. Thank you. Um, let's go ahead and look and see what this is. It looks like, I guess it's just like a spray bottle, like a water spray bottle, which 
kind of random, but I guess I could use it to either like get my hair wet because you guys may notice that my hair is like always wet for videos. It's dry by now because it took me like an hour to film this, but um, uh, wow. Oh my gosh, this is so nice. What? Look at that. <gasps> Oh, wow. And I like, I don't know if it's again for plants or for what, but it's a really nice bottle. Like I have a spray bottle that's nothing like this. I don't even know how you would take it off. I don't want to break it. So I guess I'll look at the instructions, but thank you so much. Whoever this is, please email me so I could properly thank you. But until next time, I will see you guys in a new video soon. Bye guys.